Average velocity, VA, is simply the total distance traveled divided by the total travel time. Average velocity equals depth divided by one-way travel time or twice the depth divided by the two-way travel time. Throughout this video, we'll use the notation Z for depth to reflector, lowercase t for one-way travel time, and uppercase t for two-way travel time. Let's start with a simple Earth model and place the source and receiver at the same point on the surface. The average velocity of the seismic wave reflected from the first interface is equal to twice the thickness or depth of the upper layer Z1 divided by the two-way travel time T1. For example, consider this interpreted seismic section with a well at shot point 1689. From a synthetic seismogram, we correlate a well depth of 3,350 feet to the shallow horizon. With a seismic reflection time of 1.050 seconds at this location. Given these data, what is the average velocity to the shallow horizon? The total distance traveled by the seismic energy is twice the well depth or two times 3,350 feet divided by the two-way travel time of 1.050 seconds, giving us an average velocity of 6,381 feet per second. Now let's assume that some of the seismic energy continues on and is reflected from the deeper interface. The average velocity to this reflector is again equal to the total distance traveled or twice the depth divided by the total two-way travel time. On our seismic section at shot point 1689, the deep horizon has a reflection time of 1.575 seconds, which we have correlated to a well depth of 5,220 feet. So we can determine the average velocity to the deeper horizon by taking the total distance traveled two times 5,220 feet and dividing it by the total two-way travel time of 1.575 seconds, which gives us an average velocity of 6,629 feet per second. So we've calculated an average velocity to the shallow horizon of 6,381 feet per second and an average velocity to the deeper horizon of 6,629 feet per second. In general, average velocity increases with increasing depth due to compaction. Now, let's plot average velocity versus depth. We'll assume the rocks at the surface have a velocity of 5,800 feet per second. Next, we plot our two calculated data points. Our first average velocity was 6,381 feet per second at a depth of 3,350 feet. The second was 6,629 feet per second at a depth of 5,220 feet. Next, we draw the curve that fits the data. We can easily see the relationship between increasing average velocity and increasing depth. 